Leviticus chapter 23 and verse 33. And Yahweh spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, saying, The fifteenth day of this seventh month shall be the feast of tabernacles for seven days unto Yahweh. And on the first day shall be an holy convocation. Ye shall do no servile work therein. Seven days ye shall offer an offering made by fire unto Yahweh. On the eighth day shall be an holy convocation unto you. And ye shall offer an offering made by fire unto Yahweh. It is a solemn assembly, and ye shall do no servile work therein. Shalom, brothers and sisters. This is your brother, Yahweh Yala. I want to give all glory and praises to our Heavenly Father, Yahweh. And we do so in the name of our Lord and Savior, Yahweh Shai. Grace and mercy be abound to the hopeful elect scattered throughout the four corners of the earth that are waiting on the second coming of our Lord and Savior, Yahweh Shai Hamashiach. Uh, today we're going into a lesson uh, just concerning uh, understanding the times and the seasons. Um, basically, this is one of those, you know, be instant in season and out of season, uh, reprove, rebuke with all authority. So, you know, the reason why I'm going into this is because um, I know there was a brother who had sent me some information concerning a camp uh, that was out in Florida. It has actually kind of been an ongoing discussion over the last, um, you know, pretty much I would say 10 months. Uh, about this particular group on and off. It's not even something that we talk about all the time, but it has been brought up quite regularly. And, uh, you know, one of the things we're talking about was the calendar and whether or not um, these guys out there in Florida were following the right calendar or not. And uh, there was discussion concerning um, the Sabbath and when it came in um, and whether or not that was the right time it came coming in. Of course, we discussed Things like the Lunar Sabbath, which we've, we've corrected uh, numerous times in other previous lessons and videos. Uh, but today I'm going into this lesson in part because of the time of the year that we're approaching into. And also because of what I've seen from these um, false teachers page, uh, which is they were known initially as the Tampa Israelites. And I believe they changed their name now to Holy Servants of Israel. Okay. Now, uh, these guys have actually shown on their page that they began their Feast of Tabernacles um, back on July 31st, okay? And we are going to go over why they are wrong, okay? This is a very, this is one of the reasons why, you know, we tell brothers, if you're seeking after, um, you know, different information and that information ends up deceiving you and that we as brothers try and correct you on it and you don't see it we have no problem with you going your own way if because at the end of the day let every man be fully persuaded in his own mind and if a man feels like he is fully persuaded that the feast of tabernacles will come in the middle of summer um then that's up to him but this is just to, going to show you exactly you know why these guys are wrong i'm not going to play their video as you see in their own title alone that they um are showing when they celebrated in fact they showed when they ended it as well in one of their other videos okay and they've been on this whole wave about uh calendar issues with various groups uh whether they you follow the lunar sabbath which is what you know certain groups like gms and uh you know sakari would follow and then or if you follow the seven day a week uh schedule which lines up okay with uh the scriptures when you go through, of course, the three days and three nights lesson uh, that was done many years ago. It's no getting around it. Um, and so what we're doing is we're just going to we're going to correct. We're going to rebuke this particular doctrine, but I'm going to show you why they are wrong. So it's, you know, a lot of times if a brother is new and then they have a hard time understanding the calendar because Again, the calendar that we are under is a pagan calendar. However, it doesn't change times and seasons. It doesn't change that. Okay? So we know that we're under a Gregorian calendar. It is a ancient, it's a Roman style calendar uh, that is used in the current world we're in, but it does not change times and seasons. It does not change even some of the heathens' um, holy days that they have, such as in Islam and other religions like Hindu or even um, Buddhism and all that stuff. It doesn't change when they do some of their things. But the calendar, when we tell brothers that on certain such and such day and night is going to be this particular thing, we're just giving you a reference that you can understand 
because of the world we're currently in. But again, it does not change the times and seasons and what goes on during the times and seasons. All right. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to show you there in Tampa. I'm going to show you the weather in Tampa during the month of July and to see how crazy it is for them to be doing the Feast of Tabernacles during this time. OK, so now here we go ahead and pause this real quick. This is from uh, Tampa's uh, news channel, uh, Channel 10, Tampa Bay. It is a CBS affiliate. Now, it says here, feeling the heat, Tampa saw the warmest month on record in July. Okay? So, it says here, normal average temperature for July in Tampa is 83.8, but the average temperature recorded for July 2023 was 86.5. Now, as you go down, you're going to see what the temperature was. Okay? Okay, what the temperature was during the month of July 2023 in Tampa. Okay, this is the Tampa highs this month. Look at all the high temperatures. Okay, this shows you that you're still in the summer. Okay, you have not changed seasons yet. And this is very important to understand when you're going into these various feast days. Okay, um, so because there's certain things that happen in the earth, in the soil, okay, with different crops that are growing that you have to pay attention to when you are have when you own your own land or if you're in the land or just in general okay because this is going to let you know what's going on in fact you could back in the ancient world if you knew um a particular crop didn't grow at certain times you saw somebody eating a particular crop you would know if you got transported, what time of the year it was, because there are certain crops that grow in certain seasons. Okay, so that's why it's very important for you to understand exactly like how you can, you know, debunk this madness that these guys out there in Tampa are pushing. Okay, so we're going to go into another one. This is the almanac. Okay, now the almanac is what is used, um, you know, globally. It is a very, you know, popular thing is known as a farmer's book or farmer's almanac and um you know a lot of uh people that are into farming you know they would generally would own a farmer's almanac or they would collect them year by year essentially okay and a lot of times what happens is is that because of the technology um that has been you know increased in the earth um they're able to closely not all the time but they're able to get fairly close down the road of when a particular season would come based off of the telescopes and the information that they get from their satellites and things like that, right? So, however, we're just going to go into uh, this because we have to understand that these high holy days would have been kept in, in Israel, in Jerusalem primarily, okay? That's where the observance would have been. Um, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to show you, this is the Atomal Equinox 2023, the first day of fall okay this is very important to understand because these particular high holy days these feast days are done in their particular seasons okay and the feast of tabernacles is a is done in the fall okay i'm going to show you a little bit of information down here okay so it says here um we'll go to this paragraph right here at the top when will summer end and cool the cooler days of fall begin the autumnal equinox also called the september equinox arrives on saturday september 23rd not only do temperatures fall but also plant life slows down and so do we read about the signs of fall and the ways we will mark the equinox so what happens is, is we are approaching the Feast of Tabernacles, the plant life begins to slow down. This is where you have to do what's known as the ingathering of these crops. Okay? Because it is the end of their growth. There's the, the, going to be a time when what? The leaves and are going to begin to fall off the trees. And this is where now you can ingather these particular crops that were growing through the summer. Okay? Something you cannot do in July. Okay? Because they have those particular crops that you would grab would be would not have grown grown to their full potential to where they need to be to be uh taken in right so this is what um 
they're doing over there at Tampa is they're actually going against the time frame in which the Most High would actually have these uh, particular High Holy Days observed, okay? So we have to go into that uh, for the sake of truth and for the sake of the fact that this shows you that these guys are false teachers, man, okay? And they teach a lot of things false. They're into some stuff that doesn't make any sense at all. And any brother that is believing that them guys have the truth and the tr and that they are teaching the right thing, they need to just join them guys. If not, take this rebuke, take this correction, and stick with the correct thing and stop going about seeking various strange doctrines. Okay? Because this right here is something that has been going on for some time and it was addressed, but this one is a perfect opportunity for me to address it, okay? And for us to get this thing out the way and to shut down these guys known as the Tampa Israelites. And they they going to believe what they're going to believe if they ever repent and believe in the correct doctrine, the gospel of Yahweh Shai, as it was spoken by Yahweh Shai and his apostles, then cool. But right now, them guys is not, we never even dealt with them guys. And I don't know why anybody would be interested in what them guys is talking we talking two. We have two different songs we're we're singing, okay. Them guys are not singing the same song, but we're singing over here, okay. So now, you see here, they have the equinox for the northern hemisphere and the southern hemisphere, based off of the different places. This is the reason why, again, these high holy days were kept based off of what was going on in the land in Jerusalem, okay. Now, I'm going to show you that the fall is also still takes place around that same time. Okay, and, and by the way, the Feast of Tabernacles is going to, will be held towards the end of September. Okay, which, you know, for the brothers that are in the chat, we update the different High Holy Days as well. And we'll also do lessons leading up to those times also. Okay, now... If you go into another one, this is a website known as sunsetsunrisetime.com. It goes into the various equinoxes depending on location. And this can even show you when the sun is setting and when the sun is rising, when it's, it's solar noon, meaning high noon. And uh, you can kind of get an idea of what is going on, okay, during, uh, during these particular times, okay? So now... This is in Jerusalem. You see here, it says Jerusalem, September 1st, 2023. Okay, because they are hours ahead. Right now, I'm in Houston. It is August 31st, 2023. It is 6.44 p.m. as of right now that I'm speaking. Now, um, if you go down, it shows you that their autumnal equinox, equinox <clears throat> it shows you that their autumnal equinox is September 23rd, okay? Remember, this is where, like we read back here, not only do temperatures fall, okay? But also plant life slows down and so do we, okay? That's the reason why, even if you look at the energy of uh, our, our, you know, our heathenish uh, people, our brethren <laughs> and sisters, uh, of the flesh that are running out and about you notice that they do the most during what spring summer okay that's when everybody turns up when stuff when it starts to get when it starts to get cold people start to slow down okay that's why there's a term that when there's a lot of activity and wickedness going on during the summer they call it a hot summer okay this is where you have that's why they have this is why they act in the way that they do during that time right hot girl summer everything slows down in the fall right that's why they that's why you have you know different sports things that come in they start around a certain time in part because a lot more people are going to be home and they're going to be watching these you know baseball football games basketball games because they're going to be inside okay they're going to be more sedentary now um as we go on we're going to go ahead and go into another one in the scriptures this is exodus chapter 23 and verse 16. And the feast of harvest, the first fruits of thy labors, which thou hast sown in the field, and the feast of ingathering, which is in the end of the year, 
when thou hast gathered in thy labors out of the field. Okay? Now, when it says what's in the end of the year, it's talking about a particular season and time period of ending of a particular activity. You got to think like a farmer. Okay? That's why you have to understand what it's talking about. Now, I'm going to go into another one. It's going to roughly say the same thing. This is Exodus chapter 34, verse 22. And thou shalt observe the feast of weeks of the first fruits of wheat harvest and the feast of ingathering at the year's end. Okay? So it says the feast of weeks, the first fruits of wheat harvest. Okay? That's, that's why it says first fruits and the feast of ingathering at the year's end. Okay? Now, I'm going to go into the etymology. I know that you, hey, there's some there's some people that are offended. Okay, the blue letter boys in the building. <laughs> okay, so we're going to use additional information. A, like it says in Sirach, the prologue, the wise men seeketh understanding in the original tongue. Okay, so we're going to go into it. The word there, okay, this is for the word year in this particular uh, sense, right? The year's end. And it said the same thing pretty much in the Exodus uh, 23 as well. The word there is Shana. Okay. Now when we go into it, it says um, for a year as a division of time, measure of time, indication of age, a lifetime or years of age. Okay. So we're dealing with more of like a, the more of a division of time. Now when we go down into the child, the Jacinius Hebrew Chaldees lexicon, which is an amazing uh, source probably one of the better sources for like really understanding the root languages and how they were used uh, back in the ancient world even prior to the time of the apostles I mean they really go heavy and pretty deep on some of these things and uh, I think it's one of the more underrated sources um, within you know um, languages as far as you know understanding the Hebrew because we were our people we were Chaldeans first before we became known strictly as Hebrew people, um, meaning we had the ancestor Ibar leading into Abraham, who was a Chaldean, okay? Okay, we were we came out of the line of Arphaxad, which the, which that would be the line of, out of what is known as the Chaldeans, tells you that, I believe, in the book of Judith as well. So there's a root language uh, synergy when it comes to the Hebrews and Chaldees language. And what they've noticed when they study these various manuscripts from going back in the ancient Mesopotamia all the way to the time of the scriptures being written. They've noticed a consistent pattern in which how words were being used. Okay. And so in the word Shana, it says a year and it says, of course, of the sun. Okay. Remember the sun and the moon gives us an idea of what is going on or of the changes of seasons as in spring, summer, autumn, winter. So when it says at the year's end, it's referring to the division of time of the end of the period, the harvest period, essentially. Okay. So when you go into this, it's giving you seasons. That's why it's bringing to you seasons, because it's denoting that seasons was very integral in the use of this word Shana at times in various, um, you know, manuscripts and sources. Now, when we go into the other one which is the word end, right? So it said the year's end when we were reading the particular precept. Now, this is the the Strong's H6086-22, and that's a takwapa, okay? Which, that word, it says coming round, okay? Circuit of time or space, turning circuit, so basically, it's showing you that there's like a circuit of time that elapses where there's a beginning stage and an ending stage, and it keeps lapsing in that same revolution, okay? That's why it says a revolution, just like your tire spins over and over again, right? It's a revolution. It's a circuit of time, okay? There's a time in which this particular season ends and another one begins. Now, as we go further down... We'll also go use the Jacinius Hebrew Chalice lexicon as well. 
And it says again, circuit as of the sun, hence the course of time of season. Okay. And that's why when you even go here, the Hebrew matches, it automatically brings up that, you know, Exodus 34, 22. Okay. It all refers to seasons, the ending, the time coming of something ending or coming to pass. Okay. And that's what it refers to when you go into that word for top of top, which, you know, years end, sana. That's why we have to go into words. We have to sometimes go into the root of it and understand what do they mean by that? Because why do I, why do I have to do that? Because to us growing up in Babylon, the year's end is December 31st. That's the year's end. If someone says that, that, that something happened at the end of the year, you're going to think sometime in December. December 31st or whatever, the end of the year, right? We're talking about the end of a particular period of time, and the precepts prove it because we know it's talking about particular seasons. Now, I'm going to go ahead and go into the Bible Hub, and this is um, an article written in the Bible Hub, the Feast of Ingathering in the End of the Year, okay? It says here, the Exorcisms of Holy Scripture by Alexander McLaren, okay? Not talking about the car, <laughs> You know, you know, and it says here, um, goes into the same, okay, which is Exodus 23, 16, and the feast of harvest, the feast, the first fruits of thy labors, which them has sown in thy field, and the feast of ingathering, which is the end of the year, which thou hast gathered in thy labors out of the field, okay, so as you read down, it says the Israelites seem to have had a double beginning of the year. One in spring, which is the month of Abib. Okay, that's where the time of the Passover will begin to come, right? And it says one at the close of harvest. Or it may only be that here the year is regarded from the natural point of view, a farmer's year. Okay, meaning a farmer's time period. This feast was at the gathering in of the fruits, which was the natural close of the agricultural year. Okay. Now it says here, this festival of ingathering was the feast of tabernacles. Okay. Which is what they're keeping in the middle of summer. Unfortunately, they're under this, that deception. Okay. I'm talking about the, uh, those guys in Tampa. It says, it is remarkable that the three great sacred feasts, the Passover, Pentecost, Tabernacles, had all references to agriculture, though two of them also received a reference to national deliverances. This fact may show that they were in existence before Moses and that he simply imposed a new meaning on them. So now, let's go further down. And you're going to see like the different uses of this, like just thinking about how words are used, right? To signify a time of a, of a closing of a season or a beginning of one, right? So it says that be that as it may, I take these words now simply as a starting point for some thoughts naturally suggested by the period at which we stand. We have come to the end of another year, looked for so long, passed so swiftly and now seeming to have so utterly departed. I desire to recall to you and to myself the solemn real sense in which for us too the end of the year is the time is a time of ingathering and harvest. We too begin the new year with accumulated consequences of these past days in our barns and garners. When you go into here it says this fact masks the reality of the reaping here. But it points on to the great harvest when God shall say, gather the wheat into my barns. Okay, which is known as the end of the world. The end of the age is known also as the great harvest. Okay, that's why we observe and keep these high holy days. It's to train our minds into thinking of what's to come. Okay, that's what Paul wrote Okay, in his epistle about keeping these high holy days is a sign of things to come right so it's the same way when you have an end period 
of your harvest, you're going to gather, in-gather, and then you're going to put your stuff up and stock it in your barns. Because you're going to, you're in a period where there's going to be no more crop growing, and now you're getting going to be approaching towards winter, okay? So this is one of the reasons why you'd have to do this. And this is partly what people had to do for for thousands of years in order to survive, okay? They had to prepare in their seasons, all right? So now, um, another, another example of that is going to be like the pumpkin, okay? You have your different um, types of crops, okay? You have the... Uh, you know, uh, types of squash, you have squash that actually grow, as you see here, there's a summer squash, and then there's a winter squash, and this is one of the reasons why you see, you don't see pumpkins, you shouldn't see a bunch of pumpkins everywhere, you know, in the middle of summer, okay, and that's why when you get towards September, October, you're going to see different types of crops come into play, now we do know with globalization and trade and different things that they do with the uh, with these plants to allow them to grow in certain seasons when they're not supposed to, unfortunately. Um, that's why sometimes I think that there may be a beneficial to seasonal eating of certain types of foods that grow in, in their particular seasons in regards to, you know, uh, our health, our overall health, but I digress. Now, this particular one is going to be grown in a certain time, okay? Because it tells you, and if you read here, uh, we'll start from here. They, the winter squash, they differ from summer squash in that they are harvested and eaten in the mature stage when their seeds within have matured fully and their skin has hardened into a tough rind. At this stage, most varieties of this vegetable can be stored for use during the winter. Okay, so you would gather these fruits in and they would be good for you through the winter. Winter squash is generally cooked before being eaten. And the skin or rind is not usually eaten as it what is with the summer squash. Okay, and it says here, culture layers of winter squash that are round and orange are called pumpkins. And so that's where we get the word pumpkin from. And it just goes into the different things. And you go into the planting and harvesting, okay, because that's how farmers think. They think in terms of planting and harvesting. Okay, there's the time you plant and there's the time you harvest, right? It's, that's why it goes into sowing and reaping, right? So you sow into the ground and then you later reap the benefits in its season, right? So it says uh, squash is a frost tender plant, meaning that the seeds do not germinate in cold soil. Winter squash seeds germinate best when the soil temperature is 21 to 35 degrees Celsius or 70 to 95 degrees Fahrenheit, with the warmer end of the range being optimal. It is harvested whenever the fruit has turned a deep, solid cover, color and the skin is hard. Most winter squash is harvested in September or October in the Northern Hemisphere before the danger of heavy frost. Okay, so you see here that this is harvested Again, right around the same time as the Feast of Tabernacles or the Feast of Ingathering. Okay? It's very simple to understand when you just go through and follow what the scripture says, you understand what things will occur in their times and in their seasons. So these guys over here from Tampa who call themselves the Holy Servants of Israel, who said that the beginning of the High Holy Feast of the Tabernacles started on July 31st, they have been debunked. If they were actually in the land of Israel 3,000 years ago, people will be slapping them over the head. Okay, the priests will be slapping them over the head, saying, what are you doing trying to keep this Feast of Tabernacles in the middle of summer? That's what they will be doing. See, that, and that's how far we have fallen as a people that something like this is hard to understand. It's hard to understand, even though it's literally in there telling you what's going on. And this is what happens when a group of guys go about, okay, trying to rework the whole calendar, okay? This is something that the elites did to confuse the masses. And then once we got the understanding, we understood that, okay, this is just simply a calendar that is used because of the people that rule over the world. But we can still figure out when things would happen in their seasons. And that's where 
wisdom comes into play, reading of the scripture, adhering to it, understanding why the tabernacles was being held and what they would be doing during that time, right? So unfortunately for them, you know, they have been misled and I don't know exactly what it is about them that wants them to change up so many things. But again, this is what happens when people are, you know, are self-willed and not, they're not under the will of the Lord, okay? They begin to create false doctrine and heresies. So let's go ahead and go into Second Ezra, chapter 13. And we're going to go ahead and scroll all the way down towards the bottom. And start at verse 54. For thou hast forsaken thine own way and applied thy diligence unto my law and sought it. Thy life has thou ordered in wisdom and has called understanding thy mother. And therefore have I shewed thee the treasures of the highest. After other three days I will speak other things unto thee and declare unto thee mighty and wondrous things. Then went I into the field, giving praise and thanks greatly unto the Most High because of his wonders which he did in time. And because he governeth the same and such things as fall in their seasons. And there I sat three days. So he governs these things and such things as fall in their seasons. Okay. There's a reason why you can get pecans in the fall, but you don't get the pecans in the spring. Now we're going to go on to Wisdom of Solomon chapter 7. We're going to go down to... We're going to verse 17. For he had given me certain knowledge of the things that are, namely to know how the world was made and the operation of the elements, the beginning, ending, and midst of times, the alterations of the turning of the sun and the change of seasons. Okay? So the change of seasons is partly the reason why we observe the Feast of Tabernacles, or the, known as, also known as the Feast of Boots, the Feast of Ingathering. Okay? It is not something you just do it willy-nilly just because you feel like doing it. It is a seasonal event that you observe. It is, actually has a meaning to it, both what's happening on the earth and spiritually as well. Okay? So now we're going to go and close it off with the book of 2 Timothy chapter 4 and verse 1. I charge thee therefore before Yahweh and the Lord Yahweh Shah Hamashiach, who shall judge the quick and the dead at his appearing and his kingdom. Preach the word, be instant, in season, and out of season. Okay? Be instant, in season, out of season. Reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine, for the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lust shall heap to themselves teachers having itching ears, and they shall turn away their ears from the truth, and shall be turned unto fables. Okay? So this is a warning, okay, that was given and charged to us by the Apostle Paul that we need to be instant, in season and out of season, because there's going to be a time when certain brothers and sisters are not going to endure sound doctrine. And that's why we do try and keep it simple. There are times we can go way deeper into what we do know, but it's not beneficial for a lot of brothers and sisters to go into certain topics and to know certain things um, because they have to they have to still understand these more simple things, these principal things. Okay, you still gotta get over through the milk. And I know this right here is could be understood even by you know a middle school kid, meaning kids in middle school, they know about seasons and things and they know what happens during different seasons, right? So we have to also sometimes humble ourselves like children and have the same type of mind to observe and to know what's going on and to adhere to what the scripture says and what is really going on and not turn aside unto fables. So hopefully this is edifying to you brothers and sisters. And again, I want to give all glory and praises to our heavenly father, Yahweh. We do so in the name of our Lord and Savior, Yahweh Shai. Grace and mercy be abound to the whole full elect scattered throughout the four corners of the earth. Shalom.